Welcome to the No Tracers podcast. How's it going, guys? I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time hearing my voice, hello. My name is Kay. I am your host here on the No Tracers podcast. This is a podcast all about urban exploration. It is full of tips, tricks, and tales from different adventures that not only have I gone on, but my different guests on this podcast have gone on. If you're new to the podcast, please go back and listen to the previous episodes. I have other guests as well on this show. And the first couple of episodes are actually full of tips and tricks for you if you are trying to get into urban exploring. I have been exploring since I was 13 years old. I'm now 27. I've been documenting my explorations for the past five, four years. And I uh, I think that I've got a little bit of insight on how you could get started as an urban explorer. So definitely check out those previous episodes. And if you guys are into photo prints or really cool books, I have a book out called No Tracers, An Urban Explorer's Diary. It's full of high-res photography and stories from my explorations all over the world. If you guys want to check it out, pick up a copy, you can go to notracers.com slash shop. And if you want to read my blog and see some of my photos from abandoned places, just head to notracers.com slash blog. There is a link down in the description. If you guys are looking for gear, there are a bunch of Amazon links in the description as well for things like backpacks, solar chargers, camera gear, uh, audio equipment. If you need that, if you're trying to start a podcast like this, there's a bunch of gear links down in the description for you. Uh, Masks, boots, backpacks, all that kind of stuff. Definitely check out those links if you guys are looking for some gear. But Like I said, this week I am talking to Matt from Finders Beepers, and we are going to dive into this episode. If you guys like what you're hearing at any time, please leave a rating and some feedback. And if you do so, I will send you a signed photo print. All you have to do is take a screenshot of your feedback and send it to me at no.tracers on Instagram, and I will mail you a signed photo print from an abandoned place. That's all you got to do. It's free. It takes you like 30 seconds to leave feedback, and then you get a photo print. It's easy. I need to take a second to thank our first partner, which is Liquid Death Water. I am now a death peddler. If you don't know what Liquid Death Water is, don't worry. You've got an ad coming in three, two, one. From the streams of the Austrian Alps comes a new kind of water. A water that is sure to raise you from your grave. If you're tired of buying cases of plastic water bottles that contain carcinogens and God knows what else, Or if you're trying to lower your waste footprint, Liquid Death comes in beautifully rugged aluminum cans. Murder your thirst with a can of Liquid Death. Check the link in the description and use code just the letter K at checkout for 10% off your order. Liquid Death, murder your thirst. Just a note on this episode, so there's actually a little bit of feedback on this episode. I don't know if it's feedback, but it's kind of like a wobbling sound effect. I don't know what it is. Uh, It might have been something with uh, Finders Beeper's microphone or with the connection we had, but just so you know, that is there. So I'm sorry if that's annoying, but I just wanted to let you know up front. But this episode is super great, so I hope you stick around to the end and power through the weird vibration sound. All right, Finders Beepers, Matt, can you please introduce yourself and tell the audience how long you have been exploring for? Hi there, I'm Matt from Finders Beepers. Um, I'm over in the UK and we've been exploring probably for about three years now um, in the UK and all over Europe and further afield as well. So what got you into exploring in the first place? What made you catch the bug? Well, we started off being metal detectorists, actually. It wasn't um, going out exploring at first, but the history element of that made us look into the building side of things, and then we went from there, really. So what was your first exploration? Um, The first one we did, we did a couple of small ones, so like farmhouses and things like that, but the first major one we did was a mental institution uh, that went right back to the early 1800s. Uh, massive, massive place. It was just about to turn into houses. You know, so we went went in there. It was fantastic. 
So for those that don't know, uh, I mean, they should know, the UK has obviously been around a lot longer than America. A lot of the people that are from America came over from the UK. And so you guys have older buildings over there, which I think is super fascinating and super amazing. Like here in America, our stuff is mostly from like the 1900s on and you guys have stuff from the early 1800s and even before that. Um, Can you talk about the, the history behind some of these places that you've explored? There's some, like you say, there's some amazing, really, really old buildings dating back. I think the oldest one we've been around dated back to having buildings in the 1300s, so quite a long time back. Um, I think that's that is the good thing about the UK, UK exploration. There's such a varied amount of buildings, whether it be the really old or the sort of new book more interesting for other reasons of things that have happened there and one thing or another. And then when did uh, photography and videography come into play for you? You've got a YouTube channel, so I know you do a lot of video stuff. When did you guys pick up the cameras and start documenting everything? Um, it was, we started metal detecting as a bit of a hobby as, as friends. Um, and then we went for a weekend away up to Scotland um, and it sort of started from there, uh, like I said, with the name Finders Beepers. That's where the name comes from, uh, with the metal detecting side. Uh, and then we just sort of started to take photos and videos, not only of the the things that we found, but the areas and the places and the things, like the buildings and the history around that. So that's where it started, really. And then for you uh, or for for new explorers, they often ask, like, what gear should I bring? Should I get a light? Should I get shoes? Should I get a backpack? What gear would you recommend for new explorers? Now, it, it depends, really. It depends what level you want to go into it. So, for example, the first building we went into was a farmhouse, which wasn't really there wasn't much to it. It had been burnt out at one point. The, the guy that had lived there committed suicide um, and we wanted to sort of have a look into that. Really, you wouldn't need anything other than, because we I film, edit and do everything on an iPhone. So you don't need the biggest, best camera in the world. The phones these days are absolutely fantastic. And I think it's because I've got the background of working for Apple in the past. I know the apps to use. So it is, you do have to have a bit of knowledge around that. But Obviously, health and safety is quite a big thing. Uh, if you're new to it, we're, we're a little bit gung ho. We don't re- we get told off all the time for um, not having the right protective things and masks and one thing or another. But I think that's just us. We're at that age where we, we're almost at our time anyway, so it didn't really matter so much. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, I think I don't know. It's it's down to you. It depends. I, I would say that the sa- safety element is important. Obviously. We do make light of it and we have a laugh about it, but obviously we have been doing this for a while and we're we're quite comfortable with ourselves to do that. But as a new person coming into it, you might want to get something that's going to stop you standing on nails, masks, for example, especially with the current situation. Um, And then, like I said, we've always used a phone, so if you're comfortable just using a phone and the editing software on there, do that to start off with, see if you like it. Perfect, man. Thank you for uh, telling everybody about that. I think it's super important, you know, especially like you said, right now, masks are important and respirators. There's this asbestos, lead paint, all kinds of different stuff in these abandoned buildings. So safety is definitely important. Um, What has been your scariest exploration? Oh, there's just so many and for different reasons. Um, I think the most scared I have been was probably in Russia. Um, we went to what we thought was an ab- abandoned military base, and it had been abandoned, and there was lots of abandoned military helicopters there, probably about 40 or 50 when we first researched it. Um, when we actually got there, the military had reclaimed that area, um, and there was quite a lot of um, Russian army with big, big, massive dogs and guns, Um, and all the helicopters were still there, but with guns attached and bombs attached and all sorts. So, yeah, we got chased by the Russian army. That was pretty scary, I would say. That's probably the scariest in that regard. Um, In sort of, we've been to some pretty spooky places as well, though. We've um, 
will be like a lot of the asylums, they've got that that eerie feeling about them, like there's somebody watching you all the time. Uh, and I think the main one would be on the spooky side of things. There's somewhere called St. Joe's uh, Seminary, which basically was a school for um, Catholic priests. Uh, so the children were made into Catholic priests eventually. Um, and there was a lot of uh, sort of abuse that went on there, and that was ultimately why it was closed down but we felt I I sort of believe in ghosts and Dave who comes with me does not at all he's totally totally skeptical and he felt petrified he felt like we were being watched the whole time it was really really uncomfortable in there I loved it we both really enjoyed it but you just felt on edge all the time yeah, I call that feeling the darkness. Um, it's hard to explain it unless you're an urban explorer because people don't understand what it is, especially like those that don't believe in the supernatural. Uh, they they oftentimes are like, oh, that's nothing. It's all in your head. But no, there's like a tangible feeling in the air. Certainly, yeah, definitely. It's, it's a weird feeling. It really, like we have apparently got that extra sense to know when somebody's watching us. Uh, like when you you stood and you can feel someone looking at you, that's what it feel, feels like all the time. It's it's uncomfortable, but it's so powerful and it's so interesting to like push yourself through that. You know, I love I love pushing myself through that that scary feeling. It's so it's so invigorating. You know what I mean? Definitely, hundred percent. I, I prefer explores like that anyway. I'd rather that than just a an empty building with nothing about it. I think having that feeling there is definitely better than just a, a boring old explore. So you've been to the catacombs before. That is one place that I've wanted to explore uh, extensively, but every time I get ready to like go, I always uh, hear the horror stories of people getting robbed and left in the catacombs. But can you talk about your experience down there? So ours was a bit of a mixed one. So we... We know quite a lot of people that have been down there and had bad experiences. So uh, Dan that we went with is good friends with Exploring with Josh. Um, I think we're going back to the catacombs with Josh um, next year sometime or later this year, depending on when lockdown's lifted. Um, and also um, Ali Law, we're good friends with him as well. And both of them had quite nasty experiences down there. Uh, Josh actually swore he would never go back down again, um, but... We have sort of got around him and made him come with us. But, um, yeah, we were wary. We knew, I think we were more worried before we got in than when we actually were in there because of all the horror stories. But once you get in there, there's just such a weird place. It's so strange. For a start, for the first good almost two hours, you, you're bending over, walking almost on hands and knees through quite deep water, um, through like tunnel after tunnel uh, so that sort of takes away that fear because you're just working and it's really really hard really hard work but then when it opens up it's just an amazing place it's, it's not like anywhere I've ever been before and I don't know I didn't feel particularly on edge when I got in there it felt strange when there was bones after bones and there, was, there were there's one of the tunnels we're in, um, we were sort of crouched down and the tunnel height should have been about six or seven foot and underneath that it was just bones. So we were stood on maybe five foot of bones. So that was a weird feeling, a really strange feeling. Whoa. The only issue we had was we got one guy that came with us called Matthew, not me, another Matthew, and um, he got into a bit of a, an argument with a cataphile. Now, the cataphiles are the people that either live down there permanently or they are down there a good amount of their, their lives. They're in and out of there. Um, uh, because he was filming and he didn't realise one was around the corner and he came around the corner and started filming this cataphile and they weren't happy with him at all. So then the word was spread out to all these other cataphiles and we basically got cut off. So we had to go on a different route and the, the other people we'd gone with, the Germans that we'd gone with, didn't know another way around. So we were down there maybe 14 hours um, in total because obviously we had to try and find our, our way out a different way. So yeah, exciting, 
worrying at times, but amazing. Really, really good. Sh- you were there for 14 hours, dude? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> at any point, were you like, we're never going to get out of here? It did seem like that a little bit, but there was... Like the Germans that we went with, they were amazing. They'd got the underground maps anyway. They'd been probably three or four times before. So I'd got a lot of faith in them. Um, and they'd actually been locked down there the day before. <laughs> so they went in one entrance and the police um, saw them go in and we- got somebody to weld the door shut so they couldn't get back out Jesus. again. Jesus. <laughs> I know, which is quite worrying. Um, but they bumped into some other catafiles that were um, sort of friendly. They talked to them and they gave them a different way out. And they were down there a good sort of 15, 20 hours uh, as well. So, yeah, it is um, it is one of those things where it potentially can happen, but you've just got to stay calm, make sure you've got plenty of liquids with you. Uh, that's the main, main thing. And um, just not panic, really. Because there's 200 miles of tunnels down there. So it's... Be, be terrible if you take her on to Whew. I can't believe people live down there. I didn't even know that until you just said that. So there are cataphiles that live in the catacombs? Yeah, I suppose it's like it's like homeless people. I know there's um, similar wow. sorts of people in Vegas, isn't there, that live in the sewer systems. I suppose it's a similar sort of scenario to that. Wow, it's so fascinating. I want to do like a full documentary about the catacombs one day. I think it would be uh, super fun to document that and try to tell this story. Um, so have you been exploring during quarantine or have you been lying low? No, we've been doing podcasts. Um, so we've been literally remotely doing it. Uh, Andy's been at his house doing it. I've been here. Uh, it is frustrating not being able to go out, but I just think the risks it's stupid. The people that are going out exploring, I just don't agree with it because it's not just them, it's the families and other people that they come into contact with uh, when they're shopping and things. I just don't think it's needed at the moment. For sure. No, I totally get you. And then uh, what has been your favorite exploration to date? We get this question a lot. Um, I just don't know. Um, so there's highlights for different reasons so catacombs definitely well up there because it wasn't just the the exploring as well it was the whole thing so meeting up with the the german group which were fantastic uh, going around with exploring with fighters who are a big big thing over here in the uk um and then after we'd done the explore um we it was about three o'clock in the morning when we came out um and we went and got the scooters that you can get um, in Paris. And we had to go about eight miles across Paris. And we literally all went, there were about 10 of us on scooters uh, with smoke bombs coming out of the back of them and all sorts. It was absolutely fantastic experience. So, yeah, if you're talking experiences, that's probably the best one. But I think still my f- the first ever Explorer I went on will always stand out. The big first big one I did at the um, sort of mental lunatic asylum whatever you want to call it um that was amazing because it's something i hadn't ever experienced before and it will always stay with me and then do you have any goal places like places you want to explore that you haven't gotten to yet definitely um now a lot of people their first go to is um chernobyl that's not not me at all it actually doesn't interest me because it's become in my eyes a little bit like disneyland for explorers um (laughs) you get a tour guide that takes you around and what it's not i would like to go to the area surrounding there and go to the Mm. bits that you're not supposed to go to because that is a big thing for me i think if you're not allowed to go that is that's more exciting for me um (laughs) but We've looked at things like um, a lot of things in Asia. Um, we were due to go to Israel on the 1st of May, um, and obviously that got stopped because of lockdown, um, and Jordan to go to Petra and one thing or another. So that would have been fantastic. I think oh, um, Vietnam. Vietnam is one that we've we've talked about a lot. Uh, that we would love to do because there's a lot of things to do with the Vietnam War and also older history and older buildings there that we've seen. So, yeah, oh, to be fair, anywhere, anywhere that's that I've not been and is amazing. Awesome. 
And then if you could live in a, one place that you've explored for a week, which place would it be? Um, I can live somewhere. Oh, actually, easy one, this one. So um, we went to a mansion over in the UK that was used in one of the James Bond films. Um, and basically, it's a massive, massive house with everything still in it. Um, and it is beautiful, absolutely wonderful place. Uh, and I would love to go in there, but it was a hotel before, so they've got all the spa rooms and everything in there. So, it's, yeah, definitely, I'm for myself. Oh, that sounds so cool. It was used in a James Bond movie? Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, it was. Wow. We were the first people um, to stick it on YouTube. Uh, it went absolutely massive. It's our biggest video, um, 135,000 views. Um, wow. But it was... It was all over the national newspapers and, and everything. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. This guy owned it. Um, I think he was from Saudi Arabia, and he literally just went off and left it. Uh, there was security knocking about, but nothing that, that bothered us. But it was, it was amazing, really, really good. Wow, that sounds absolutely incredible. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the urban exploring community that you know? I mean, you said you're friends with like Ali Law, Exploring with Josh, Fighters. Um, can you talk about the community of urban exploration? Um, I think in the UK, it's, it's slightly different to everywhere else because it's very political over here, it really is political. Um, you get quite a lot of factions that don't like each other. Um, you get a lot of people that are squabbling over locations. And over here, we have something called, I don't know if it extends over to America or anywhere else, but there's a, a website called 28 Days Later. Um, and they are urban explorers, just like us, but they hate anybody that goes on YouTube uh, and puts videos on YouTube. So... Basically, there's a lot of friction between the, the two sides. And I've got a lot of respect for what they do because they go to some amazing places. They just hate what we do. That's the only difference. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, we've made some amazing friends. We've made, like, Dan from Fighters uh, and Buck K, they hang around together. Absolutely amazing people. Uh, helped us out with some big charity work that we've done. Um, and then, like I said, I've, I've, we've made friends in Europe as well. We've got quite a few um, you're like the Germans, for example, we've got quite a lot of European friends and a few Americans as well. So it is nice. It's nice that we can have the same thing that we enjoy and talk about that because it's the same wherever you are in, in the world. Exploring is exploring. doesn't matter if it's a new building, an old building. It's still exploring and we've got that passion for it. So it's nice to be able to talk to other people about it. Oh, absolutely. And I love that you've built this little like community. Can you talk about uh, social media? And I mean, I know we just talked about how some people hate us YouTubers, but as a YouTuber myself, like that's just our platform. We just enjoy that platform. That's where we post our stuff. Uh, can you talk yeah. about how social media has helped you as an explorer, has helped you grow? Yeah. So I think we've built up, I, I think if there'd been no social media, we would have been very, very limited to where we could explore because you know things within your own area and places to go. But we now travel on, so we explore generally on a Monday night after work. Um, and we travel anything up to four hours away. Um, and if we didn't know these places because of social media and because of making friends on there, we literally would have run out after three or four months. Um, so I think it is great on all different aspects, so Instagram, Facebook. Um, it's great to sort of see other places that people have explored, go in and experience those for yourself. But also, I think it can be a bit risky, in, and this is why 28 Days Later don't like it, because a lot of these amazing places then get damaged because of the exposure these places get. Uh, so, for example, we had one on that was on, um, I think, two weeks ago in London, um, it was somewhere that we knew about, but we'd not been able to go because of lockdown. And the story had been put on social media and sold to the newspapers, uh, which I haven't generally got a problem with, but they'd given out the location name, the area it was in. Uh. So then everybody went down and things were stolen, stuff was smashed up. And it's just, it's, it's terrible. And nobody wants that. Not, not us, not them. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, uh, what is the farthest you've traveled to explore? 
Um, probably Russia. Uh, Russia's mm. probably the furthest. Like I said, we were due to go to Israel and Jordan, but um, Est- we went to Estonia and Russia. I've just finished editing, re-editing a video from Estonia, which is quite an interesting one, really. We went to um, a former Moscow Olympic site. Um, it was wow. where they'd done the um, gymnastics and rowing events. It was actually in Estonia, even though it was, it was obviously... It was the Soviet Union um, back in the 1980s. It was all one big place. But anyway, we got there. And when we got there, um, we expected it to be empty. And it was full of British um, workmen. So we were like, what? what's going on here? So we blagged our way in, because I'm quite good at that. Um, I went to the security guard and said that we were from the newspapers and we were here to take some photos. So they let us go in. Uh, we had a good wander around and we found out quite quickly it was from, uh, it was being used or was about to be used by um, Christopher Nolan uh, and Warner Brothers for their upcoming wow. film, which I think comes out next month. Um, it was last year that we went, but they were just preparing it all. It's called Tenet. Um, and um, literally, we, as soon as we got back, we uploaded the video and within a couple of hours of it being up, Warner Brothers took it down. <laughs> So we <laughs> we had a big, massive battle with them because they basically lied and said that we'd used footage from one of their previous films, Dunkirk, and obviously oh, we had. What the fuck? No, so they were they were trying their hardest to, to sort of get get it taken down so nobody could because the location of the film or any details of the film, in fact, not even the name had been released at that point. So we fought against them. And we won, and I was absolutely buzzing. We'd won this battle against them. And then within two hours again of it being put back online, Warner Brothers Japan had taken it down, um, <laughs> which was a nightmare. Um, and basically, we got a strike for that um, because oh, it had no. actually got um, Christopher Nolan. He was there, and we didn't realise he was on the stage uh, showing people what, how he wanted things to be. And he, they got it took down because his face is copyrighted. So, so I've literally just spent the last couple of hours um, re-editing it and putting something over him every time he comes in shot. So absolute nightmare. Uh, but yeah, brilliant experience once again. So many good places over there and a wonderful place. Estonia, I would definitely recommend to go to. Just watch the Russian border because we got to there. Some emails, which is not fun. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's absolutely insane. I can't believe he was there and like, wow, that's just, that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. So my last question for you is what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started exploring? Um, I think, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. I think to be more wary of who I trust, um, basically going back to the, wrong people going to places and doing things they shouldn't do. Um, I've, I'm quite a trusting person and I've given the locations to people that I thought I could trust, but I've not been able to. So I, I definitely think that side of things, like I said, the community is an amazing group of people, but there are definitely bad eggs in there. Um, and also to watch out for big nails and things dropping on my fingers that, that's always a good thing as well i almost cut my finger off in, in manchester so yeah watch out for things like that as well <laughs> awesome man if people want to find you ask you questions or if they want to see some of your content where can they do that yeah so on youtube and pretty much everything you can think of we are on just about anything and everything um it's finders beepers or finders beepers history seekers is the full name but you'll find us if you look beepers. Uh, we've got a second channel, which is Beef of Beef, um, and our podcasts at the moment are running on, on our channel and on Spotify, um, our music, or whatever, Apple Music, and everywhere as well. But the exploring side of things, if you want that, it's on our main channel on YouTube. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for coming on No Tracers and sharing some of your stories. I had a no, blast talking good. to you. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for having me.
All right, guys, that was my podcast with Finders Beepers. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming on the podcast and sharing some of your stories with my audience. I had a blast talking to you about all that stuff, especially the catacombs. Uh, I got to get out there and explore those with you. I think it would be a blast. So if you guys enjoyed this episode of No Tracers, the podcast, please do me a huge favor and leave a rating and some feedback. And if you do that, I will actually send you a signed photo print from an abandoned place that I have explored. Look, I've been to a lot of really cool places. You want one of these prints, trust me. So all you got to do is take 30 seconds, leave a rating, leave some feedback, and I'll get you a signed photo print. Also, if you guys want a copy of my book, No Tracers, An Urban Explorer's Diary, you can get that as well as a photo print, or you can read my blog at notracers.com. All right. I will talk to you guys next week on the No Tracers podcast. Again, my name is Kay, just the letter K. Go out, go create something, and remember, leave no trace.